Hey there. I am ready to start the painting process of my Leo James Alexi V guitar. I am so excited to get on with this project and I can't wait till this is done and play this thing, but it's going to be a long road. Uh, I am doing a, hopefully going to be a professional looking gloss lacquer finish on this guitar. So when I'm done with it, it's going to look like I bought it in a store. So if you're interested in learning that process, maybe you can follow along with me on this journey. But everything that I have learned, I learned from watching YouTube and I compiled my research from various sources and put together what works for me. So the guitar kit itself is around $160 from Leo James. The paint supplies were about $160. Uh, and then you're going to need some other peripheral items, which I'll go over later. To purchase one of these in the store, an LTD Alexi guitar, you're probably starting at at least $600, $700, $800, maybe $1,000. This one is going to be custom. There isn't going to be another one in the world like it. I've always wanted the Flying V, and this is the perfect justification for me to own one. I found this company Oxford Guitar Supply uh, through YouTube and online and I chose to go with them because their prices were right. Uh, the website is really easy to use. Uh, they're a company based out of Canada but I think they have some distribution in the, in the US and uh, they seem to be really reputable and they seem to really make a good product. And what I liked is that on their website, they really simplified this process. I have never done this before. I don't know anything about doing a lacquer finish other than what I've researched on YouTube before getting into this project. And um, you can buy this as a whole kit, everything you need to finish one guitar. Um, <clears throat> all you gotta do is pick your color. Uh, I customize my package a little bit just for my needs, but um, they, on their website, what I did do is uh, they give you some basic instructions, step-by-step -step instructions about how to complete each part of the process, some basic information. Uh, I printed those out for myself just so I can keep notes and uh, follow along in this process <coughs> as I work. Uh, so what you are gonna need, one, they sell a uh, complete pack of sandpaper to do a whole guitar. Uh, you start at 320 grit, you work your way up by the finishing process, you work your way up to about 2000. Wet dry sandpaper, uh, they say this, this pack is enough to do one complete guitar. Uh, tack cloth, you're going to need from time to time as you're working um, to remove uh, debris and lint in, at different parts of the process, it's like two dollars. First thing, and probably the most important step is grain fill. Comes in a little can, like so. Manual application. This guitar, body and neck, is mahogany. Mahogany is a porous wood. You can't just go start painting this thing, because over time, the wood's gonna suck up the paint. And you might finish this and it's going to look beautiful, but then in a few weeks or months, the paint's going to start to seep into the wood and you're going to start seeing cracking and um, blemishes and it's going to start to look like crap over time. It's not going to last. Doing this process is going to make your guitar like you bought it in a store and it's going to last like you bought it in a store. So this grain fill is going to be the first part in this series and they say one of the most important parts because you're laying a foundation and you're filling in all of the um, <clears throat> pores uh, of this guitar like you can't see those pores in the guitar but um, it's 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 a must step one the grain fill next step is a primer coat I'm using a white primer because I'm doing a metallic finish but your primer coat is essentially your first base coat, which is gonna level out any imperfections or dips in the wood that you might not see or feel by hand. Uh, and you need a good foundation to work with in terms of leveling and smoothness, uh, as well as something for your paint to adhere to. 
I'm also using the white primer because I've chosen to do a metallic finish. This is Midnight Wine Metallic. As far as I know, I have never seen this guitar in Midnight Wine Metallic. I've seen them in black, I've seen them in white. I think that's probably about it. They come in black, they come in white with various pinstriping colors and fret colors and whatnot. I went back and forth over and over again. I couldn't decide what color. Black, is, they say, is one of the hardest colors to do because it picks up every imperfection. White, they say, is one of the easiest colors to do because it hides all the imperfections. And I was very close to purchasing Arctic White and doing the Alexi pinstriping, and then I decided, you know what? Like, I don't want to just make what's already out there. I want to make it my own. Uh, so I went with the wine metallic. Uh, I think like <clears throat> the dark red and the black is gonna look great. I also have some gloss black to do some accents. I might wanna do some fancy paint work on here and some accents in black. Uh, but I just think the dark red, I wanted like a blood red and black. So I just think like the dark red with uh, some silver hardware and the black hardware with some black accents is gonna look cool. Something else about doing a metallic finish is you don't have to sand it. If you're doing a solid color, an opaque color, you have to periodically sand it as you're putting the coats on of color. And with a metallic, you don't have to do that. So that, that takes one step out that I don't have to worry about. All right, so then after your color coat, you need a lot of clear coat. So the downside to metallic is you need to do many, many layers of clear coat. They're saying you need to do 12, 13, 14, 15 layers of clear coat, which takes about a week to do. I got spring break coming up, so I'm planning my painting process so that by the time I have a week off for spring break, uh, I'm gonna be clear coating every day. And then after you clear coat, the guitar has gotta sit for like, two, three weeks to cure before you can do your final buff out. But anyway, I have two cans of clear gloss. I have one can of satin. The neck is gonna be satin. Uh, the rest is gonna kinda of be a mixture of satin and gloss. Then to finish it off, we have some polishing compound, uh, a medium and a fine polishing compound. And that's it. You're also gonna need, uh, I have like a leveling block. We're gonna use this for sanding, just some scrap wood. Uh, you're gonna need some painter's tape to tape off the neck and some other things. Uh, paintbrush to apply this. You might need some mineral spirits from time to time to clean it down. Some shop rags as you're working. You're gonna need some latex gloves. Here's a secret I'm gonna let you in on that I discovered. Uh, I really wanted to do the pinstripes, the Alexi pinstripes. And uh, I was trying to figure out how to do it. Are they painted on? Do I gotta tape it off? So I found a company on Etsy that sells a sticker sheet of pinstriping and lots of other fun little tidbits they gave you. This was about $30. I'll put the link in the description. But uh, I'm gonna do my, after I paint it, uh, I'm going to put the pinstriping on. Hopefully the pinstriping is going to look okay with the metallic paint uh, and then clear coat on top of that and then hopefully it's going to look like it lived there. But, you know, they gave me you know, lots of other fun stuff. The skulls, if you want to do that. Uh, if you know, you know. And um, so, really excited about that. That's freaking awesome. So, lastly, Part of my process, maybe this will be helpful to you, was you know I was going back and forth about what color to do this guitar. I'm sure I'm st I'm still not sure about the red. So uh, I went and printed out some black and whites of the Alexi guitar, and um, you know I ended up you know coming up with this, the dark red with the pinstripes, and uh, I'm gonna do like black and red headstock, but just got some colored pencils and, you know, just started playing around. And, uh, you know, like, uh, here's another version. Uh, I started toying around with headstock ideas. I want to maybe um, do something fancy with the headstock. So, like, you can get a headstock template. And, uh, you know, I might do something like that with the headstock. 
And um, these are just, you know, originally like I wanted to do white, so I was trying to come up with some, uh, you know, some different ideas to do with the white to make it look cool. You know, kind of like a, I don't know. I always wanted a Randy Rhodes V, but I just had some other ideas to, you know, just to make mine custom. You know, I just, again, like I just didn't want to do the exact copy of this. Mine's going to be a little bit different, a little bit custom. Uh, I'm hoping this turns out awesome. I'm excited, but I'm really nervous about doing this. I've never done this before, uh, but I can't wait to get started, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, we're going to start with the sanding and uh, grain filling. So I hope this was inspiring to you and maybe you can follow along with me and um, fucking do it. <laughs>